I'd like to introduce our speakers for today's session. Maral is going to be doing the speaking, and her last name is Ki Kiani Tai. And she uh, came to Latvich uh, some years ago with her family, and she has been the executive director of the Latvich Food Bank for the past year and a half or two, two and a half years. And, a half years. <laughs> and she has done some amazing things. She started a lunch program, but she'll tell you all about that. So without further ado, uh, I would like you to join me in welcoming Maral. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I want to take this opportunity and thank you for having me here today uh, to share with you what we do at the Lethbridge Food Bank and what we do for our community and where we have come from. Um, so to start, uh, I wanted to kind of go where it began. Lethbridge Food Bank was established in 1982. We have uh, Jenny Skinner, who was one of the uh, one of the very important people as part of creating and developing Lethbridge Food Bank here, actually. And uh, we also have uh, one of our board members, and uh, he's been sitting on the board since the dawn of Lethbridge Food Bank, Lloyd Carefoot here as well. And it's uh, it's my pleasure and my honor to to know both of them and and to be part of this organization. Uh, so. Uh, Basically, it, Lethbridge Food Bank started as a, a, there was a need in the community and it, it started to be able to feed that need and create um, a resource for our community. So our mission is to support our people with access to food and community resources. It's pretty simple, um, but what we want to do is to be able to be there for uh, their need, especially with the food, uh, emergency food, uh, but not only that, to be able to connect our, our community members to other agencies that will be able to get them on their feet. So a few statistics, uh, we serve approximately 700 households a month, uh, which translates to about 1,600 individuals, of which 40% are children. Uh, we provide our clients with one hamper per month and bread and produce twice weekly. Now we are uh, one of the two large uh, food banks in our community. Uh, which means that if you duplicate that number, it will kind of give you a better picture of what the need is within uh, Lethbridge. We do operate on a, a cloud-based joint database, which means that uh, we, we make sure that uh, there are no duplications, and uh, we ensure that uh, clients uh, don't go, uh, we ensure that we can uh, feed the need in our community and be able to uh, serve our community members as best as we can. Uh, a statistic that's not on there, but I would like to point out is, on average, uh, about 70,000 pounds of food leave our building uh, and go to our community. So it's a, it's a pretty um, huge need, and um, uh, there's definitely, um, throughout Christmas time, the need definitely goes up. So um, some of the guidelines, uh, our, our clients have to actually register within both food banks to be able to utilize our services. So some of the gui guidelines in accessing the food bank will be to bring an ID for each adult in their household, uh, proof of health care card for um, every resident in the household, uh, proof of income, which would be pay stubs, child tax, anything that would be considered income, uh, proof of address, and of course proof of necessary expenses, which would be mortgage, rent, utilities. Um, at that point, our our client intake uh, coordinators will um, assess the, the, our client and be able to provide them with the necessary um, hamper size. So the hamper size are according to the number of people that are in a household. Um, they range from small to extra, extra large. So that goes from a single household to um, six and above. And we do have uh, quite a bit of families that are about the 11 range, so 11 people in a household. And we want to make sure that we provide enough food for, uh, for those um, individuals in that house. Uh, what we do is our, our hampers are about seven to ten days worth of stapled good. On top of that, we, we like to be able to provide uh, protein items, uh, be, able, be able to provide uh, bread and produce, and um, so we, we um, on top of our hamper, we provide eggs, we provide meat that's donated, and, uh, and uh, um, other items that would come through the food bank. Christmas hampers, I will get into uh, a bit later, will be much larger than that, and they will include our Christmas meals as well. 
So aside from our emergency hamper program, something that I mentioned before is our, as a food bank, we want to be able to get our uh, clients on their feet, to be able to com uh, connect them to other communities, to be able to provide them with other programs that we can. So uh, some of the programs that we do offer are birthday bundles. We assist our parents with uh, their children's birthday necessities. Um, something that... Uh, has been really helpful has been our tax clinics. So uh, during tax season, we have volunteers that come in uh, through the library and actually do the taxes for our clients and um, for free and to be able to help them uh, learn how to do that and, and get on their feet as well. What we noticed is um, out of the few, uh, I believe we had 32 clients that uh, we did their taxes last year, uh, quite a number of them didn't come back to the food bank for a few months, which was an indication that when funds are available, they don't need our help, which is a good, it's a good sign. Uh, we also provide the snack packs and, um, like I mentioned before, Christmas hampers. So our Christmas hampers are not only our regular uh, monthly hampers, but we upsize the items in, the ha in, in that hamper, but also provide the Christmas meal, which would be the, the turkeys, the chicken, the ham, the Christmas goodies, and anything that would give that that feel. We start registration for our Christmas hampers in November, and we encourage our, our families to pre-register so that we are aware of how many uh, hampers that we, we're going to be uh, pre-building. And this last week, uh, we started distribution of our hampers. So it's, it's been quite busy at our location. Uh, to put it in perspective, on the first day of distribution, we had 167 households that came through our doors. So it was really busy, and um, it was great to see. Uh, but what... Um, what we do with our Christmas ha hampers is we, we basically collaborate and partner with uh, four other agencies in our community, um, Interfaith Food Bank, Salvation Army, uh, Shop of Wonders, Angel Tree, and uh, we register our clients for their food hamper. We, we meet the need for the food, and the other three agencies will meet the need for uh, the toys. But we share one database to ensure that we uh, don't duplicate services and that we utilize our resources. So it's been a great partnership this year, and um, we anticipate to serve approximately 4,000 children and 2,700 adults, and we're pretty close to being there. What we also offer at the food bank is referral and clothing vouchers. So um, aside from at this moment, um, we do have a closet at the food bank that we um, it's stocked with clothing with uh, through My City Care, and uh, clients can help themselves to anything they need. At this moment, we had to take the, the clothing um, cupboard away just because we needed more room for our, our Christmas distribution. But we do provide vouchers and referrals to other agencies for them to be able to utilize that as well. But one uh, program that I really want to focus on, and, and we're quite proud of it, is our uh, lunch program called Mindful Munchies. So our Mindful Munchies uh, is a collaboration with My City Care uh, to provide nutritious lunch options to children and youth that are in need in our community. And when I started at the food bank, one of the most alarming statistics that I came ar across, and really I wanted to be able to... Um, tackle was that it, one in five children in Lethbridge live in poverty, which is highest in all of Alberta. So it was, it, it's, it's, poverty is real. Child poverty is real. And um, I want, we wanted to be able to tackle a piece of that solution. So our goal is to ensure the healthy food is provided to our children and youth to enhance their future success. We know that um, based on some research, um, nutrition is very key and nutritious lunches are, um, are necessary needs to redirect the children's focus on their educational performance. It will contribute to change in behavior and a healthier educational atmosphere for, for not only that child but all the other children that are in that classroom. So our goal was to ensure that nutritious lunches are provided to our children in need, aiding in their educational and behavioral success. And then we believe that children's attention span is not at its maximum capacity due to that lack of nutrition. They do receive uh, breakfast, but come lunchtime, the afternoon classes tend to lack a little bit of uh, focus just because they, they're uh, full in the morning but hungry in the afternoon. So we wanted to be able to provide... Um, some help in that sense. So our program began on October 2nd of 2017, um, and we started with 11 schools um, and agencies and approximately 600 lunches a week. Within about a few months, that number rose to 16 schools and 1,100 lunches a week. 
Uh, I have to mention that we don't just provide to schools, but we also provide to other agencies that uh, support our children and youth that are in need so that uh, they can do what they do best and we can do what we do best, which is provide food. So in 2017, 2018, to put it in perspective, um, we provided 29,000 lunches. And uh, what we do is we actually um, prepare the lunches at the Lethbridge Food Bank. We purchase all the items, we prepare them, and My City Care delivers them to the destination that needs um, to go to. Uh, September 10th was the uh, first day of our uh, deliveries, and we are currently at 20 schools and 1,500 lunches a week. Um, and as of uh, no end of November, we've distributed 15,000 uh, lunches. So the, the number definitely grew this year, and it's not only because of the addition of schools, but also uh, the schools that participated last year indicated a higher need. Um, they uh, noticed that the, some of the students that utilized the, the program last year um, attended more school. They came to school more often, um, just because there is a lunch that they can, they can take. And um, that, that's a good sign, because they will participate in the, in the classroom. So one thing that's really unique about this program, and um, I think it's it's a, an asset, is that we we are able to um, fit the program however the school's needs are. So it's pretty flexible. Um, we can do it however way the school administrators let us know. So we can do the traditional bag lunches, which we pre-bundle the bag lunches. Um, we'll create them according to a set menu. So they will be um, protein sandwiches, dairy products, fruits and vegetables, and a grain product. And uh, we will put them in the brown bags and then the schools will distribute them um, however they wish. Or we, we, we do the tray system, which is we provide the raw ingredients. So it will be uh, trays of fruits, trays of vegetables, and um, basically a bowl of um, the filling of a sandwich. And then the kids can go through that system and create their own lunches. That also teaches them that skill of uh, being that in independent and being able to uh, create their own lunches. Or we can do the combination of both. So uh, it's really important that what we wanted to do is not to have a rigid system and a program, but to um, be able to ask the, uh, the administrators, how does this work for your school and for your students? So we were able to really custom fit the program, and it's worked great so far. So this is an example, like the, the, the pictures uh, is an example of our lunches. So the middle picture would be what a child would receive. So there is a sandwich, a protein sandwich there. It's, uh, I believe that one is a pea butter and honey sandwich. So pea butter is actually made from golden peas and not peanut, so it's peanut free. Um, and we have the cheese strings, the yogurt drinks, the fruit, and, and the bagged vegetables. We do um, portion them according to um, what a child needs and so that we make sure that we, there is no food wastage and that a child also utilizes what, they're, what they need. So one thing we did um, at the end of the year, it's always great to be able to provide food to um, our students, to our kids, uh, to, to those that are in need. But we wanted to know that whether it made an impact. Does it actually, uh, um, you know, in theory it does, in research it does. Did, it, did our program actually make an impact? And uh, I did send a survey out to our, uh, some of our schools that participated from the start of the program. And uh, one of the, there was multiple different questions, but one of the questions that I wanted to focus on was, in, what, in which area did you notice an impact? The question before said, did you notice an impact? And they said yes. So uh, one thing that you, you can see is improved behavior was at 81.82%. And that was something that I already could have anticipated. And as research shows, a hangry child is never a ha happy child. We, we all know that. And it's not even just a child. I know if I'm hungry, I'm not happy. So uh, uh, we wanted to, but it's, in, but it's great to see that it showed in our survey that there's improved behavior with the children that were utilizing it. Before uh, this survey went out, one of the uh, schools actually shared with me uh, an internal survey that they did. And, and on their internal survey, it indicated that 61% of their students come to school without eating breakfast. Now, whether that is by choice or lack of food, uh, these kids still did not have the nutritional um, factor to be able to focus on their classes. 
the increased behavior is really uh, important because as research has indicated, when there is um, when there's lack of nutrition, there is um, lack of, there's a behavioral problem, which then causes uh, disruptions in the classroom. Disruptions in classroom don't just affect the child who's hungry or who's not behaving well, but also other students that are in that classroom. The teacher would have to more focus more on that disruption than to focus on uh, what the curriculum would be about. So this, is, this was really um, great for us to see because it would reduce those disruptions and be able to allow the kids to intake that information that are, that are provided to them. The better performance in class was at 45%, and I was very impressed with that statistics because I didn't um, think within that, you know, with with I did I did know and I did believe that nutrition does actually correlate with better performance in education, which is why we created the program. However, the the number was high in my in my mind, and it might there are definitely other factors that affect a child's performance in class, but this was something that um, teachers had, had revealed to us that because of a new change in their system, there was an increased um, performance. In the other section where it says 36.36, .36, that one is actually based on families reporting to uh, the administrators. So there's a, a, a few schools that reported back that their families had come to them and expressed their gratitude for um, their, their children being fed. Not, not just being fed, but also that they don't have to worry about whether their child is going to be hungry throughout the day, whether they're going to do well in school, whether they're going to have disruptions in classroom. So there was a, um, a whole statement that came from one of the schools indicating uh, that a few of the parents were, um, it relieved stress on their part so they can focus on other things and became, they can provide for their family in that way. So there was definitely huge success in our uh, program, which is why we um, decided to run it again for, um, uh, for the second year. And the success kind of continues. This is, I wanted to show you this image and it's covering, but it's, it, it shows the import, importance of our program. And this actually came from one of the agencies that we, uh, we support, that we provide lunches to. And they created that, um, that big card for us. And it says, thank you for your helping hands from future helping hands. And that is, in essence, what we want to do is to create those future helping hands, to be able to give our children that um, opportunity to make change in their future, to get out of generational poverty, to be able to um, be able to help their future generation. So it's, it was a heartwarming um, card to receive, and it definitely brought tears to everyone at the food bank. It, it's uh, hanging up in our kitchen as, as uh, people and our volunteers help us out. So our future goals. You can see kind of our kitchen. Um, I'm not sure if you can, that, that, the bottom picture is um, actually our kitchen where we create the lunches. And it is not a full functioning kitchen. So it doesn't have a stove or a dishwasher, and uh, which why which is why we can only create cold sandwiches. Um, our goal, my goal, would be to have a full functioning kitchen and to be able to um, provide more variety to our, our students, to be, to be able to cook those meals, reduce the costs. Um, it is uh, pretty costly to um, make things that are already pre-made, uh, but to be able to actually cook them and, and create them our own, it will reduce our costs. We could be able to uh, perhaps serve more students and more schools. So that's a, that's a future goal. Um, I like to set my goals high. Um, so, but as you can tell, without um, the help of our staff, without the help of our volunteers, um, we, we use a lot of volunteers for this program. Um, our staff are constantly working. We have our kitchen coordinator that actually puts um, many, many hours in prepping uh, the vegetables. Uh, there is, you can't really tell in that picture, but we beg 576 vegetables every other day. So it's a, it's a lot of manpower, and um, everyone's uh, amazed, and everyone's grateful to be able to do that and provide it for the community. So I wanted to share with you some of the testimonials uh, from our program. And I, I'm not sure if it's really um, easy to read, but 
uh, one of the schools indicated that the ladies that look after our lunches and snacks were teary-eyed and so very grateful. We received what looked like the week's worth of munchies, bananas, apples, granola bars, yogurts, cheese, veggies. Thanks again. I'm so excited to start feeding the kids this afternoon. That was the first day of somebody's Mindful Munchie program. Another one said, we absolutely love the Mindful Munchies program here at Mike Mountain Horse. It has become a vital component to our school and had a positive impact. Um, another one, fabulous, Mindful Munchies is a huge success at our school. We could not do what we do without you. Thanks so much. And this one is a long one, but I'll uh, paraphrase. But um, at fifth on fifth, um, they had um, um, basically seen a attendance increase. Um, they had seen basically their attendance go from 80% to 95%, and that's due to, um, and they did actually solely say it's due to the lunches that were being provided. Um, the students and the youth were coming in just for the lunches and staying for their uh, their classes. So it was, it was great to see that it's making an impact not just on our students that are between you know, our, our young but also our youth as well, because we have to invest in them to be able to um, help our future. And yes, well, I wanted to take this opportunity again and thank you for allowing me to share with you what we do and, um, and, and what the need is in, the, in Lethbridge and in our community. And I wanted to share with you uh, this quote, which is really important. Alo alo alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. And it basically um, wraps up everything I believe, because alone, we can't we can't tackle everything, but together as a community and together with um, everyone, we can be able to actually tackle uh, child poverty and um, hopefully eliminate it. Thank you very much.